Well, hello, hello. How are you doing? How are you doing? This is the S. Anthony Says Podcast. This is the S. Anthony Thomas. How are you doing, my friends? How are you doing? You know what? I'm back now. I've been off for a little bit. Almost was off uh, this week, too, because I'm having a little bit of vocal problems. This is episode number 475, but we're going to try to get through this because I want to get back to talking to you, my friends all over the world. And I got to ask you a question. I mean, we've all been in situations where, okay, I'll put it to you this way. You're familiar with the saying, you give them an inch, they take a mile. You're familiar with that, right? And we know what that means. Sometimes your compassion is is used against you, right? And I, Dave, Dave Chappelle does a routine about a guy. He was trying to save a homeless guy in some way by giving him some money. And the guy said, the hell with that, I want some crack. Well, years before he did that, did that routine, uh, something like that actually happened to me when I was living in Los Angeles. And I talked about it before, but... With the new people. I was at a McDonald's and, and I was living in Hollywood at the time. And it was a guy outside the Hollywood McDonald's by the bus station. And he wanted some money, right? And I didn't have any change. So I'm going, you know, I said, you know what? I'm going to hook you up when I come back out. So I go into the, the McDonald's and being Captain Compassion, I decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do him a solid. Because sometimes when you give homeless people money, they go in and try to buy something and the people won't even allow them in the store. I've been there before, uh, back in my hometown. There was a guy outside of a coffee shop I used to go to all the time. And I gave him some money. And I walked away thinking I did a good deed. And as I was, I drove around the block, um, because I was going in a specific direction. I had to go around the block because of traffic. It, it was, it was a weird story, but I had, it was, I was beating a light. And as I came through, I could see him in the store because you can see through the glass door. And I could see them rejecting him and sending him back out because they thought he was coming in to harass customers, which maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But I realized that sometimes people who are homeless or who don't look, who look disheveled for whatever reason, businesses will reject them. Right now, I'm not a homeless person. I, I remember going into a business. I'm just a you know, regular at working stuff like everybody else. I go into this business and I was dressed like somebody who was cleaning his garage out because I was cleaning my garage out. So I didn't look all that great, but, you know, I was cleaning my, my garage out. It shouldn't make a difference. I go into the bank to cash a check that someone was giving to me to pay me back for something. And you would have thought that I walked in with my pants off throwing feces at people because they were just looking at me with like complete disgust. You know, they were t- t- checking the check, going through all, taking it to the manager, going to the back. I could see people in the back talking and looking at me and pointing. It, it was, it was a, you know, the, the same kind of look and talk and point you get when you're, when you're trying to buy a car and the salesperson goes back to the sales manager to act like he's fighting for you, which really sounds stupid because why would he fight to get less money for himself? Right. So I saw him getting rejected and I know what it's like to get rejected as it turns out. Um, I was, I went to that bank on a day when I normally wouldn't go. So as it turns out, one of the tellers at the bank recognized me as a regular customer and I saw her walk back to the two people that were talking and pointing. And then she pointed and you, you could see their, their, their physical body language changed to, Oh, oh, okay. He's not somebody we should treat like crap because he's a regular person, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So they come back out and once that, once that happened, everything, all of a sudden they started being nice again. And then they were like, Oh, so I said, I said, yeah, sorry. I said, I look, I know, I look, I'm at some cleaning my garage. Oh, you know, that kind of thing. But it just goes to show you sometimes people will look, use the way you look to reject you, reject you. And in this particular case, he was rejected. So what I started to do after that was when I would go there, instead of giving him money, I would go into the store and I would get him a coffee and a big Danish or something like that. And I thought it was kind of cool. You know, as it turns out, I had to do that every time I went there because he was looking forward to it. He recognized my car. I would see him brighten up when he saw my car. A couple of times I was actually driving by the donut shop. I wasn't even going in the donut shop, but I saw him brighten up and I was like, oh, let me get out there and buy this guy. I went into the donut shop and I went up in there just to buy him the coffee and the Danish because he saw me and he was he brightened up thinking, oh, goodness, I'm going to get a drink and something to eat. And that's, and I was like, you know what? I got, let me just do it. Cause I had, I had started the practice in that particular case. I didn't feel taken advantage of. I just realized that, you know, it is what it is back to the McDonald's back to Hollywood. 
And much like that guy's routine and much what happened in real life, I go in, I'm in the store and I know this guy is probably going to be rejected and not allowed to even walk into the McDonald's to buy something. So I go in and I'm going, and I was, I was, I was making a little bit of money back in the day, right? So I go in there, I'm like, you know, I'm going to hook this guy up. So I got a bunch of burgers, <clears throat> excuse me. I got a bunch of burgers and I walk back outside and I try to hand him the bag. My buddy's next to me. He's smiling like, hey, my buddy just did a good deed. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be great. I'm helping this guy out because I figured this is enough burgers where he could eat. eat. This is enough for the whole day. Or if he has a, a buddy, he can give a couple of these burgers to his buddy. Or sometimes homeless people have a dog or something like that. He can throw it to the dog, whatever. I, I didn't know, but I thought I was doing something good. And he literally smacked my hand really, really hard. My hand hurt. And the bag started going towards the ground. And my reflexes in my 20s were really fast. I still caught the bag. And I looked at him and he said, he cursed at me and said he wanted, I forgot what he wanted, a drink or whatever, but he wanted the money. And I didn't realize that. Right. I mean, if he'd have just said, oh, I appreciate this, but I really needed the money. You know what I would have done? I would have given him money and he would have had money and the burgers. But that was a situation where my compassion, I was actually punished because of my compassion, because he, did, he if he had just said he wanted to, could you help me out is what he said. Right. So that's a, a, an illustration of um, being compassionate. Sometimes it bites you in the buttocks. And I bring that up because I was reminded by talking to a friend of mine a little while ago about when I lived in Los Angeles and we had we had some really interesting neighbors in that apartment building. <laughs> yeah, I'll use that word. Interesting. OK, we had one guy who thought he was better than everyone else because he was like one one millionth of one percent more attractive than than the average person. Right. And we had another guy who, you know, you ever just get into a situation where someone talks a little bit longer than you necessarily want them to when you're on the way to something. Like if you have a long day at work, you're just beating up. Maybe you worked in the factory. Maybe, maybe you had a long day in the office. And you just want to use niceties when you run into somebody in your office building. You just want to say, hey, man, and just go about your business. Say, how's it going? And they just say, hey, how's it going with you? Hey, great. And you go back. and. But this is one of those guys that would literally stop you and tell you for 10 minutes. You're literally standing there holding food from a takeout place. Every normal human being knows when you see somebody walking towards their front door and they have something in their hand that indicates a hot dish and it's late in the day or the evening, the last thing they want to do is stop and talk about something, especially if it's something that could have waited or something that they didn't necessarily need to hear about in the first place, you talking bastard. By the way, I happened to be walking in with hot food and he started talking about some dumb crap and I couldn't get rid of him. I didn't want to be impolite. I couldn't get rid of him. I didn't want to be impolite. But then I said, oh, wait a minute. Oh, God, I got to make a phone call. He goes, oh, OK. And I realized, yes, that got me away from him and my food is still hot, but I can't be trying to get a phone call every time I see this schmuck. So now I'm trying my best to mission impossible my way into the house so I don't have to see him. But unfortunately, this sucker is standing by his front door, smoking a cigarette. And I know daggone well he's sitting there waiting for me to come by so we can bend my ear about some stupid crap I couldn't care less about the bastard. Which was the truth. Well, one time I was coming home, but I wasn't coming home from work. I was coming home from a bad time with someone I was dating, right? She had done some stuff. She was mean to me and I felt really bad. She was mean to me based on something that I didn't do that she apologized about later. But, you know, sometimes when you're really mean to somebody, they don't look at you exactly the same way. Even if they forgive you, they, they're just, it's like having a glass that, you know, just imagine if you had a glass and somebody fixed the glass in such a way that you couldn't fill it all the way up anymore. It was impossible. Maybe there was a little hole at the top of the glass where if you tried to fill it up, the, the liquid would leak out, right? And instead of getting rid of the glass, you kept the hole of the glass. You just know not to fill it up to that point. And sometimes we have friendships and familial relationships and romantic relationships ships that are just like that. There's a hole. You can fill it most of the way up, but you can't fill it all the way up because you can't get out of your mind what that person did. You forgive them, but it's never quite the same. And at this point in time, in that particular relationship, I had forgiven her 
Oh, I was going to forgive her, in a, in a, you know, but it wouldn't be quite the same. But at this particular point, I hadn't gotten to the forgiving part. I had gotten to the, I'm really hurt that she was the way she was or said what she said. I don't want to get into specifics, but it was pretty bad, right? Even though I was right and she was wrong, which she apologized for. But the hole was in the glass, metaphorically speaking. Back to this guy. So I'm walking up the steps and I see him and I'm like, oh, I can't mission impossible past this bastard. Oh, and I got more hot food. Oh, you know what? What the hell? Right. I'm walking slow. He sees that there's something wrong. He asked me what's going on. Right. And at the same time, I kind of eh, girlfriend problems. And he goes, yeah, my wife. And he starts telling me about some stuff that his wife did. Almost as bad as what happened to me, but probably worse because he was actually married and living with the woman and I was just dating this particular lady, right? And as I'm like, yeah, that sucks. And I'm kind of half, you know, not even thinking and I'm walking toward my house and he's still talking and then he walks in with me and I look at him like, is this guy just walk into my apartment? I'm like, dude, you're two apartments down. Why is he walking in? My-? And he keeps talking, right? And all of a sudden it becomes about him. But as it turns out, it wasn't that big of a deal. I put my food in the refrigerator and I said, you know what? He's venting. He feels exactly the same way I do. And then I'm going to vent to him and we'll have this little vent session. You know, we'll bond over this a little bit, but I still don't necessarily want to talk to this chump every day. Nice enough cat, but I don't want it. Right? So I show him compassion. And he vents and 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 vents. I look at the clock. It's been 90 minutes. I haven't said crap yet. Now I don't want to vent anymore because if I vent, he's going to respond. And he might be here till next week. So I give him the short version of what happened to me. At this point, I'm not as angry anymore. Right? We bro hug. He leaves. I walk him through his door. We bro hug one more time. And I'm thinking that's it. (laughs) Because I was stupid. I've mend fences with my girlfriend. Once again, there was a hole in the cup. And of course, I'm not married to it. So obviously the relationship ended a few months later, maybe about a year later, something like that. <clears throat> well, that's beside the point. Back to this bastard, right? So now because he had some place to vent every single time his wife tortures him It turns into 75 to 90 minutes of this bastard sitting in my house, taking up my time at the end of a work day. I'm tired. I, at the time, worked in an office and had to be literally making sales calls at six o'clock in the morning on my first job. Then I was doing stand-up comedy at nighttime. Yeah, you know. Stand-up comedy shows end kind of late, right? And when they were not doing stand-up shows, I had another day job, an evening job. So when I came back, I either had done a long sales job and some stand-up at night or a long sales job and another job and coming home. So when I came home, I was never refreshed, never looking to hear someone complain for 75 to 90 minutes. But this bastard did it. And now his wife is even more angry at him. Where are you going for the 75 to 90 minutes? You're going down to that guy's house? What, are you complaining about me? So now she's even madder at his punk ass because his punk ass is telling my punk ass his punk ass problems with his punk ass. 92 days of this. 92. You're probably going, they weren't 92 days in a row, were they? Yes, they were. And each of those 90 days was 75 to 90 minutes. And as the time went on, as we went from day three to day 15 to day 20, the 75 to 90 minutes turned into 80 to 90 minutes, turned into 90 minutes, turned into 98 minutes, turned into 120 minutes. At the end of a long day, I had shown this cat some compassion. I gave him the inch and he took a mile, a mile. Now, I'm a nice guy. I didn't want to go, hey, dude, I kind of like you a little bit, but I don't 90 minutes a day at my front door like you or 90 minutes you walking into my apartment and cutting into my time. I didn't want to say that to the bastard. Right? 
And I also didn't want to get into a situation where I stayed away from my home because I didn't want to see his punk ass. Because now all of a sudden that's just as bad. I have to go someplace I don't want to go. And what if I go to that place and then his punk ass is still waiting for me? Then I still got to do the 90 minutes after avoiding his ass. Hell no, right? So what would you do in that kind of situation when you want to get rid of this bastard? What would you do? Now, current me would have cut that crap and the, the nipped that crap in the butt easily. When you're a middle-aged man, you have the intellect that you don't have when you're in your 20s, the maturity that you don't have in your 20s. And then you can go, hey, because I would go, hey, look, man, I, says, I, don't, I, says, I know you like to vet and all that kind of stuff, but you're going to. The more you talk about it like that and you vent like that on a regular basis, it becomes a habit. Literally complaining becomes a habit. And you should take that energy. And instead of venting to me, which I don't mind, which would have been a lie. And I don't mind, which would have been a huge lie. Use this energy to talk to your wife. Because the more you talk to me, the less you talk to her. The less you talk to her, the more distant you become. And the problem becomes bigger. I care about what happens to you, man. And I want to make sure that you fix this problem because I don't want you to lose your wife. Okay, maybe you should go to counseling. Bending to me is fine, but it's not going to help your problem. Which what I'm really thinking is, dude, I'm annoyed with you and your wife. I hope she divorces you and takes the apartment so you have to move away because she don't talk to anybody. Now get out my face, loser. But I wouldn't want to say that. Now, how did 20-something me get rid of the problem? How did 20-something me solve the problem? Was he as eloquent and intelligent as middle-aged me? No. No, he wasn't. Do you know what he did? He started taking gigs in places he didn't normally play, places that he knew sucked on purpose. Right? Long enough where the guy fell out of the habit of annoying him, meaning 20-something me, and latched on to another stupid neighbor (laughs) who was a couple of flights down because they met in a laundry room, right? And because he had latched on to this neighbor, right, who was even more, had a more difficult time getting rid of him, he would actually just kind of give me the nod and wave and point almost Friendly but dismissive, because he now had his new sucker, right? And as it turns out, I was safe. He kept going to annoy that guy, which was great because that guy, as it turns out, was as big a pain in the ass as him. They became close friends. They were the pain in the ass Butch Cassidy and Sundance kid. Their wives were annoying and evil to them, and they were stupid and pains in the ass. And they became two wonderful pain in the ass couples, Butch Cassidy and Sundance kids of annoyance. And uh, what's it? What's it? Uh, what's it? What are those two ladies that ju- that were in the car? Um, what are the ladies that jumped? Uh, I forgot the name of that. You know that movie where the ladies were they jumped off the. What is the name of that? The, those two ladies. What is it? Uh, you know, the, uh, I can't remember the two. The name of the two ladies. That it was a famous movie with two ladies in the car. Brad Pitt was in the movie. Gina Day was in the movie. Susan Sarandon was in the movie. Of course, I'm going to remember the name of the movie right after I finish this podcast. <laughs> Thelma and Louise. How ah, there it is. Thelma and Louise. So they were the Butch Cassidy and Sundance kid of being annoying. And in the, their wives were the Thelma and Louise of being evil to their punk ass husbands. And then the inevitable happened. They all moved away. Ah. Uh, was great but as i was but the point is sometimes your compassion can be taken and dragged and used against you but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be compassionate be compassionate anyway but just make sure that when you give an inch they don't take a mile soon as they get around about a foot and a half shut their punk ass down (laughs) because this bastard took like eight miles you know like that Eminem movie, Eight Miles. It took eight miles, and I should have shut his punk ass down. So that's what I'm saying to do, okay? So if you give compassion to somebody, keep an eye on it so you don't get used like a sucker, all right? That's the lesson from today's podcast, you bastards.
All right, my friends, this has been episode number 475. Thank you for coming back. We will be here every Monday, my friends. I look forward to talking to you. Do me a favor. If you love this podcast, you got this far because you do. Do me a favor. Subscribe to this podcast. This podcast is everywhere. It's on Spotify. It's on iTunes. It's on iHeartRadio. Basically, everywhere that podcasts are played, it's played because I just added this podcast to YouTube music. So if you're on YouTube and you listen to YouTube music, it doesn't matter whether you have, whether you have a paid plan or a free plan. Just like Spotify, if you have a paid plan or a free plan, it doesn't matter. You can still listen to this podcast. Please do. We will be here every Monday. We will be here every Monday, my friends, okay? And uh, like I said, subscribe to the podcast. And if you love this podcast, and you do, make sure to tell a friend to tell a friend about the podcast. I'd really appreciate it. Much love to you all, my friends, and I will see you again next Monday. S. Anthony out.